Are you tired of those chrome outlets that look a little too classic on your base or V-Sport model Cadillac CTS? Well, if you have a 2014 to 2016, I'm gonna show you how you can just add in quad exhaust tips to make it look a little more sporty. Up next. <laughs> So maybe you don't like those chrome exhaust outlets on your CTS and you want something with four exhaust tips like the CTS-V. Well, luckily one of our earliest V-Sport members, Jerry Terry, has figured out that you can install quad tips. Unfortunately, you do need to remove the chrome exhaust outlet and the only way those come out really is if you remove the bumper. But I'm gonna show you that that is not hard at all and you can absolutely do it all by yourself with minimal tools. Having the quad exhaust is really gonna make your car look a little more sporty, and if you wanna go the extra mile, get the Savage Cadillac diffuser, and you can see that in my other video where we install a diffuser after removing these exhaust outlets. All right, now I'm gonna show you how this is done. If you jack up your car and you have some power tools, I bet you can knock this out in less than 30 minutes. Let's get to it. All right, to remove the bumper on your car, you really only need one tool for 90% of the work and that is a seven millimeter socket because there's a bunch of seven millimeter screws. So you'll need that and some way to drive it. I love my Ryobi power screwdriver. It's cheap, it's small, and it's powerful. Check out my description below for links to buy one. Also, if you don't have that, you can use some other way to drive it. Uh, this might be a little too tough for the wheel well area unless you remove your wheels. This is good in a tight spot and I love my gimbal ratchets. They get into a tight spot and uh, get the job done. Now some cars have T15 Torx screws on the wheel wells, so you might wanna have one of those handy if that's what you have. Some type of flat tool like this or flathead screwdriver may be handy for you, but not required. And I like to have an extension to get to the bumper screws. You might not need one quite that long, but I think some extension of at least six inches should be handy. And of course, to make this job easier, you'll need a jack and some jack stands. All right, here's your 20 second review of the procedure. First, remove the 20 screws that hold the bumper to the fender and the wheel liners. Then we'll remove the bumper, remove the exhaust outlets with the four screws on each, and then reinstall the bumper and the 20 screws to hold it on. That's it. This is Adrian and his 2016 CTS V Sport. He owns a tasty taco truck in San Francisco, and you may remember his car from when we did the ZZP intake install. Today, we're gonna to do a few mods on his car, plus fix one of his emissions problems. To remove the outlets, you need to remove the bumper, and the easiest way to do that is get the car lifted off the ground. You can check out my other video on how to properly raise your CTS, but for this procedure, I just raised it at the differential with a pad and then placed jack stands just ahead of the rear wheels. Now, Adrian's car has his chrome outlets painted black, but these are essentially what we are going to remove to make more room for our quad exhaust tip to stick out. First, get under the car, and we need to remove four seven millimeter screws right along the center here. As you remove these screws, don't worry about organizing them. They are all the same length and size. Next, we'll remove five seven millimeter screws from the splash area behind the rear wheels. Go ahead and remove the other five from the passenger side as well. Next, we need to detach the wheel liner from the bumper and there are two screws holding those in. Now, Adrian's car had T15 Torx screws on one side and seven millimeter screws on the other. So you have to take a look and see which socket attachment you'll need. Just remove these two lower wheel liner screws and then we need to remove the seven millimeter hex screw that is holding the bumper to the fender. You'll see it here pointed straight up, but you'll probably need a small extension to get at it. Repeat now for the other side. 
Now, if you hadn't raised the car, the tire would be in the way and you couldn't access these screws very easily. But if you remove the wheels altogether, you'll be able to get your power tool in there and they'll come out real quick. And now, of course, the fender screw. All right, congrats. You've just removed all the screws necessary to remove the bumper. Now, all it takes is tugging at it. So you can see right here, you can just pull the bumper away from the fender area. It just kind of clicks in. So that's what we'll do first. We're gonna pull the wings, so to say, from the bumper area here. Just pull them out and get them to release. Now, some people like to put a little strip of tape across the fender to prevent possible scratches, but I was careful and there were no scratches to be had. Once you get the driver's side off, you're gonna see this connector. It's a harness for all the power to the items connected to the bumper. Now it's usually mounted, I think, to the side of the bumper, but Adrian's was already loose. So you'll need to unlock it with the red switch here. See that, that's unlocked, locked, unlock it. And then you're gonna pull this lever to release the harness coupling. That unlocks it, and now you can separate the two parts of the plug. Here's what it looks like, there's a black clip. I actually didn't even notice this until the video, so I didn't actually put it back onto the bumper. Sorry, Adrian, but it was like that before, it'll be fine. All right, now I want you to watch me release this bumper basically in real time. It's very easy to do, just take your time and gently pull and tug and everything will come off. It might be a little scary at first as the top section by the trunk there sort of clicks and pops out and you think you're breaking things, but no, you're not. It's just hooked on there. You can lift slightly and pull towards you. Uh, all those forces will help get the bumper off. Just support it carefully. It may help to have a second person, but as you can see, I had no problem doing it myself. I've actually only removed the rear bumper on two other cars. And so while I was doing this, I stopped because I was a little unsure of myself, but then I went back at it and tugged on it some more and it came right off. Also, I didn't show you, but you wanna prep the area below like a big piece of cardboard or a blanket to set the bumper on so it won't get scratched up. All right, let's take a look at what's inside the bumper here. Of course, gonna be removing that exhaust outlet on the left, but there are also proximity sensors and side object sensors that not all models have. There's also the reverse lamp in there as well. While you're here, this is a great time to swap out to LED reverse lights if you haven't already. Just use a 10 to 12 millimeter wrench or something to open and close the light sockets here and swap out the lights. It's so much easier when the bumper's off, but I'll have a video for one with the bumper on later. Here's the exhaust port. We have four, you guessed it, seven millimeter screws holding the exhaust port on. So first, let's remove these two that are pointing downward. Now we need to kind of get this absorber out of the way. There's this razor blade looking clip. This one popped off really easy, but the other side gave me some trouble. Now we have access to those other seven millimeter screws underneath. Just lift the absorber and zip out those screws. You can see why this would be so challenging if the bumper was still on the car. Remember the metal bumper presses right up against that absorber above the exhaust outlets, so it's almost impossible to get those screws out. Now you can just pull the exhaust outlet out and set it aside. All right, for the driver's side, like I said, this little razor blade looking clip, it gave me a little trouble. I thought I'd poke at it with a flathead, but this didn't really get me very far. In the end, I just ended up yanking and it came right off. Now I'll zip out those four exhaust outlet screws. And then that exhaust outlet comes out. All right, now we gotta put those razor blade looking clips back on. They just press in place. The one on the passenger side, of course, was easy to put on. I don't know why that one was different. I tried reshaping it, but it just didn't stick any better, but that's okay. The absorbers held on with plenty of other clips and screws. First step to putting the bumper back on, remove the cat. I guess he liked that spot. All right, let's put the bumper back on in reverse of how we took it off. It's pretty easy. Just lift it and support it from the center and carefully bring it towards your vehicle. You don't want the wings of the bumper slapping against the sides of your fender and scratching it up. If you want, tape up your fenders to help protect them. 
but if you're careful and you tilt the bumper downward at the front, you can hook the top up over the edge of the trunk area section and uh, then slowly work it into place under each tail lamp. And once you get it under those tail lamps, it just slides right into place. Give it some good presses and you'll hear lots of clicks so you know it's getting secure. Now, just carefully press in the wings of the bumper under the fender, very easy to do. Now that was all done in real time. Pretty quick, right? All right, let's put those screws back in. Remember there's four seven millimeter hex screws that go under the bumper. And then you got five under the splash areas. However, don't install this first outermost screw if you plan on installing a Savage diffuser, because if you do, it will be very difficult to remove the bumper because the diffuser covers it up and the diffuser is more difficult to remove. But if you don't plan on attaching a diffuser anytime soon, go ahead and put that screw in for now. Don't worry, in my diffuser how-to, I'll remind you to remove that screw. Now we can go ahead and attach the fender liner screws and the fender to bumper screw. On Adrian's car, we had T15 Torx screws here you may have seven millimeter hex screws. I'll move on to the passenger side, get the five splash area screws in, the fender screw, and the wheel liner screws. And that, folks, is all that's necessary to remove your bumper, to get those chrome outlets off, so you can have quad exhaust. Now just get over to your local exhaust shop to have the tips put on. It will cost you about $100 to $200 probably, and some exhaust shops might not be up for the effort. Adrian had to go to three before we found a place that was willing to do it. But obviously, it can be done, and many people have done it. All right, that wasn't too bad, right? Pulling those exhaust outlets, I thought removing a bumper would be so much harder. I've done it a couple times, but it's been a few years. And on the CTS, after doing it the first time, I know that I can just get it on and off in like 15 minutes. Having power tools though really helps because it's kind of tedious to turn all those screws. Now that we've done this on Adrian's car, we're gonna install the Savage Cadillac Diffuser. Be sure to check out that video next if you wanna get the Savage Cadillac Diffuser for that CTS V rear look. Otherwise, if you found this how-to helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe, and be sure to to hit the bell to be notified when my next video comes out. Thanks so much for watching the Jet Fuel Only channel. I'll see you next time.